React India. Um, hello, everybody, and thank you for joining me with uh, giving me the opportunity to speak to you about some really cool technology that we're working on here at Affinity. Thank you for having me at React India 2023 Hybrid Edition. I'm very excited. As you just heard, I'm the Chief Technology Officer at Affinity. I'm very excited to be able to speak to you about all the cool things that we are building, uh, the products, the services, and the tools for developers specifically, and also about our concept of holistic identity, which we're going to talk a lot about in the next couple of minutes to help you elevate your end user experience. Now, look, I think you'll agree that identity management is a pretty complex and constantly changing topic. We've all seen massive shifts over the years uh, as we've moved from centralized to federated and now in the new world, decentralized authentication and identity management. And today, decentralized identity is shaping the future of online authentication. And Affinity is at the forefront of creating user-centric uh, identity management in this new decentralized world. At Affinity, we are working to change data ownership for good, to put the consumer back in control of their data and of their identity online, and to put privacy and consent at the forefront of every single thing that we do. The Affinity Developer Toolkit, which I'm going to talk about today, gives you new ways to do familiar things, but also familiar ways to do new things, to ease the burden on developers like you to build for the future as you create applications that enable privacy and consent in this new decentralized world. Our goal is to make it easy for developers to build privacy enabling applications that put the consumer back in control of their data. That's our goal. But let's set the scene. What is the problem that we are trying to solve here? Well, look, today our online digital identity is really fragmented. I think you'll agree. As you go from website to website, you leave bits of information around during registration and, and even usage of those websites. And the problem is that the information that a website will store about you, it's often incomplete and it really fails to fully represent your entire identity. So the website really only has a slice of you. It only has a slice of me. So there are many, many, many attributes that would identify me. So I have preferences, I have traits, I have individual attributes that all together would describe me as a person in the, in the real world, probably even hundreds of thousands of them. Some of them are acquired attributes, like my name or where I live or what I do for a job, or some of them are preferences, like my favorite color or my favorite music genre. And then there are traits about me that I can't control, that I've probably inherited, like my eye color. But all of these, those things together identify me. They, they make up my identity. And what's interesting is that in isolation, these attributes don't really uniquely identify me, but all together, they do do a really good job of um, describing me as an individual. So that collection is um, really creates a complete picture of me. Now, as I said, as I move through the from website to website around the internet, and each of these websites only have a slice of me, they're not doing a very good job of uh, having a complete picture of my identity. So I, I'm leaving these traces of my attributes around all these websites. And each of these websites, they've got some blanks to fill in. So some of the websites will do things like they will use surveillance tactics to try and work out what is my behavior and, and what I'm going to do next to try and build out their vision of what my identity is. That doesn't really work well for me. And worse, they even try and track me from site to site as I move around the internet to, again, to try and fill in the details about my identity. Now, ultimately, my digital self is completely fragmented, as is yours. I can't present myself as a holistic entity on the internet. I don't have a holistic view of myself online because as I interact with each of those sites and they have a limited amount of information about me, they're just making things up or they're guessing what they, what they know about me. And I have basically no privacy and no control at all. So if you think about it, the internet itself is, lacks that identity layer that would fix this problem. And further, when you think about it, the, the fact that the internet, the way we use it today, it's completely broken. So when the internet was invented many years ago, identity wasn't a consideration. So sure, yeah, there were uh, security uh, requirements. So we can have encryption between devices that connect across the network, no problem. But the internet itself doesn't understand identity, which is a higher level construct. So these websites, as I mentioned, they've had to invent their own ways of authenticating uh, people that use the websites um, and coming up with this, this problem that uh, all the data is completely fragmented and each site really only knows a part of me. Now, a few years ago, some of the standards that uh, started to emerge based around OAuth 2 
and uh, OpenID Connect. So you see players um, implementing uh, federated authentication, so such as uh, login with Google or login with Facebook. Um, and the good thing about that is that you don't have to register on every site with a new username and password. These big tech giants have done us a favor by you know, giving us this way of um, using the same um, credentials basically between sites. And it seems like a really nice thing that they've done for us, but it's not for free. We as consumers have zero control over the information that they, they hold about us. And we, while it makes our lives easier and it's way more convenient, I've really just traded my privacy and my identity for convenience. And that doesn't sit well with me either. So consumers on the internet today are pretty savvy for internet scammers. Uh, they're always on the lookout uh, for things that may look a little bit strange. I mean, we've heard a lot of stories about data breaches and those kind of things. So a lot of consumers are very uh, concerned about this. So their the top uh, priorities being privacy and security. And according to a recent IDC info brief, this is a top priority for the consumers out there. They really want more control over their personal information and their identity but they also want convenience. And sometimes these two are at odds. The problems that we are facing as developers to build websites that correctly identify and, and uh, individuals and keep their privacy, uh, it's becoming more and more difficult for us uh, as developers to build these sites. Um, and that's why Affinity exists. Imagine instead of all these websites gathering information about the individual consumers and only having that slice of information about everyone's identity. Imagine instead if the consumers own their own information and they consent to giving out access to that information on a need to know basis. So what if we turned that data ownership on its head? What if instead of websites having the databases full of information about consumers, that the consumers own the database? What if the consumers are the source of truth and the consumers are in full control what if consumers become, for want of a better term, an API and the websites log into the consumer rather than the consumer logging into the website? As developers of website, and I'm sure that there are thousands of you out there right now that are actively involved in building websites, you want to create a secure environment that your users and your consumers can trust that you're going to do the right thing with their data. And you want to be able to have a full picture of the consumers that visit your site, their individual preferences and relevant attributes about them. So you need to know, um, you don't need to know who they are, you need to know what they want and what they like, but you definitely don't want to know who they are. And as an enabler for all the things that we are expected as developers to build, I'd like to introduce the concept of holistic identity. Holistic identity gives everyone a 360 degree view of themselves online, and they remain in full control of their own identity. Holistic identity encompasses the complete spectrum of discovering, collecting, storing, sharing, and even monetizing your personal data in the digital realm. At Affinity, we are building the Affinity Trust Network, which is powered by a suite of tools, products, and services that bring our vision of holistic identity to life. The Affinity Trust Network integrates data from multiple authoritative data sources. It ensures the integrity of that data and its chain of custody, and it enables consumers to provide consent for data sharing while verifying the identities of all the parties involved in any transaction. So in this new world where AI-powered bots are everywhere, the Affinity Trust Network is going to help consumers know that they are dealing with a real person or a real organization online. And it also provides ways to protect individuals' identities from misuse and misrepresentation. It all starts with the Affinity Vault, which is now in beta. I'm very excited to be able to announce that. We've just gone into beta as of late last week. So consumers can install the Affinity Vault, which runs at the edge in the browser, and then use the vault to collect zero-party data all in one place that the consumer controls. Developers like you can then request access to the vault in such a way that puts the consumer in control of granting consent, making sure that they are always remaining in control of their data. The Affinity Elements stack, which powers all of this, it is also now in beta, very excited to be able to announce that. It's a fully managed internet scale API backplane that abstracts all of the heavy lifting and the cognitive load of building decentralized applications on cutting edge technologies, such as verifiable credentials, verifiable presentations, decentralized web nodes, decentralized identifiers, cryptographic signing, issuance and verification, all of that stuff is abstracted away from you. We give you, as developers, familiar ways to do new things and it make, make it much more easy for you to build the future of the internet with us. And our flagship product as part of the Affinity Trust Network for developers is Affinity Login. 
passwordless, decentralized, standards-based, secure authentication that brings together registration and sign-in into one single flow to reduce consumer onboard friction. I like to think of it as Web3 sign-in on Web2. Affinity Login is uh, fully supporting the OAuth2 and OpenID Connect standard auth flows. So what that means is Affinity Login can work side by side with your existing federated login providers, such as Google and Facebook, if you choose. So that means that you've given your consumers some great choice. But there is so much more to Affinity Login than some standard social login. Affinity Login uses cutting edge decentralized technologies to allow consumers to authenticate themselves across platforms and devices. It's passwordless. The Affinity Vault stores the cryptographic keys on the edge, and those keys are protected by passphrase or biometrics. Under the covers, Affinity Login uses a new standard called OpenID Connect for Verifiable Presentations, OID for VP. And that uses cryptographically verifiable claims to attest to the user's authenticity and implements the OIDC standard. It's a pretty cool technology. Affinity Login provides an enhanced user experience for your consumers. We're very consumer focused here. And we really have revolutionized the way that you think about registration and sign in because now sign up and sign in are the one same flow. And that simplifies a lot of work for developers. It also removes a lot of onboarding friction for consumers who are visiting your site. According to that OAD, uh, sorry, that IDC paper that I mentioned earlier, 79% of consumers prefer a maximum of only three steps when they're registering on a website. Only three steps. Imagine all the form fills that you've had to do as a consumer on the internet. Well, with Affinity Login, sign up and sign in is the same flow, and it's just a couple of clicks with all the required data coming from the consumer's vault with their consent, of course. Now, that's really putting the consumers first. Now, as we move forward this year and into 2024, we will continue to evolve the Affinity Trust Network suite of tools and services, and we're going to build out things like our Affinity Connector Framework, uh, decentralized data storage, messaging, and privacy-preserving tech, such as zero-knowledge proofs. And we're going to continue to release our fully integrated personalized AI assistant, the Affinity Concierge. That's coming very soon. We're very excited about that. Stay tuned for that next year. And today in our beta phase, our consumers can enjoy Affinity Login today with passwordless authentication based on those decentralized cryptographic standards that I mentioned before. And as developers, you can integrate uh, the Affinity Login uh, product with your applications really easily because it works seamlessly alongside the existing OAuth2 and uh, uh, OADC flows that you're familiar with. Consumers can collect the data in their Affinity Vault and developers can request access to that data using the presentation exchange protocol. And that will always makes sure that the, uh, the consumer is in control of their data and in control of their identity. And the great thing is you don't have to build all this technology from scratch. We are very developer focused here at Affinity. Um, you can install the Affinity command line interface today. It's also gone into uh, beta, so it's available for you to install. Um, and you get access to all of the features of the Affinity element stack um, right from the command line. It's a really powerful tool. It's intuitive, and it makes it very easy for you to manage things like projects and the Affinity login configurations, personal access tokens, user principles, policies, and all that good stuff. Very easy interface to use. But for those developers out there who prefer a graphical user interface, we also have the Affinity Portal, a single pane of glass view of all of your Affinity services. So all those same features that I just mentioned before about uh, that were available in the Affinity CLI, they are also available in the Affinity Portal. So it really is up to you how you prefer to work. And we really are dedicated to the developer experience, and we've got some fantastic documentation and these tools and more coming soon. Uh, so do please check them out and let us know what you think about the developer tooling. I'm really excited to be able to talk um, about all the things that, that uh, we've got to present as part of the Affinity Trust Network and this stack of tools. I'm very excited to be able to be here with you today uh, at the React India conference. But if you are actually on site at the India, uh, React India conference, I do encourage you to go to get your hands on the technology directly with our team on the 5th of October at 2 p.m., where the team are going to be running through a hands-on uh, workshop to get into all of the gory details of how it works. Um, and at 4 p.m. on October 6th, we're running a lightning talk to um, get into some more detail where the team is going to talk about reimagining that digital onboarding process with the Affinity Login product. So do come along and get into the tech detail and uh, get to meet the team as well. If you're in uh, the conference in person, please do visit the booth. 
uh, we have the team there ready to uh, answer questions, ask them the toughest questions that you have, because uh, if you ask them a really tough question, you could win a prize. Uh, they do love answering tough questions. Um, but look, if you're not able to attend in person and you want to know more about any of the things that I talked about today, so the affinity in general or the affinity vault, the affinity trust network, um, holistic identity or any of these tools uh, that I just showed you, the portal and the CLI, then do check out our website, affinity.com, and also get in touch with us to join the developer community. We're continuing to expand on a daily basis. We're very excited to hear from you, get your feedback and iterate based on that feedback. So wherever you are in the world today, you can get started using the Affinity login beta right now. So look, overall, our vision is to create this world where everyone can effortlessly and securely control, manage, and extract value from their data. Because after all, it is your data. We give you, the developers, the freedom to innovate with our tech stack built on all of these open standards and decentralized technologies, and we make it easy for you to adopt. And we also give the consumers the freedom to reclaim themselves, to represent themselves online as accurately as they can in the real world, instead of letting other platforms dictate their identity. At Affinity, we are working really hard to change data ownership for good and giving people the ability to take back their personal identity online. Honestly, the internet has never seen anything like this before. And I'm really excited to be able to share it with you today. I know it was a very fast session, but um, you know, if you're if you're available at the um, conference, please go and uh, speak to our team and attend some of those conferences, uh, whether you're remote or um, in person. I really do hope that you enjoy React India 2023 Hybrid Edition. Um, thank you so much for taking the time, giving me the opportunity to speak to you today. And please, let's all keep building together. Have a great conference. Thank you so much, Adam, for your such an enlightening talk and i was truly like it was truly inspiring for me as well so uh i hope like it is not late at your end like um we can take two or three questions uh from the comments right yeah of course if you got questions for sure 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 so first question is how easy it is to integrate affinity into a new project yeah very easy so like i mentioned we uh um, implementing the OAuth 2 and OIDC standards. So if you already have an IDP, we can plug directly into that because we are standards-based. Um, if you don't have an IDP, we do have a, um, a use case for um, a standalone version, um, and it is very easy to integrate. Um, the good news is that uh, the workshop that um, Giri is going to be running on uh, the 4th of October is actually a hands-on workshop on how to integrate Affinity uh, login with Affinity directly with your application. Um, it's using Passport.js uh, and, and Express. So this is like a pretty typical use case that you would use as a developer to integrate. But again, because it is standards-based, it really doesn't matter what implementation you have, you can plug in Affinity login with that uh, with your existing flow. Thank you so much, uh, Adam, for the answer. So now the next question is how easy or how exactly it is passwordless? Is it two fa a factor authentication or uh, yeah, that is a question. Yeah, so we we have um, we give the consumer choice, uh, so they can choose to use uh, just a passphrase if they want, but they can also choose biometrics. So using the secure enclave on the device, they can protect the, the credentials with uh, biometrics. So we we give them that option as well. So uh, again, it's all about choice for us. Um, some consumers prefer. Uh, to have some uh, very long passphrase. Some of them prefer biometrics. We like to give uh, give them the choice. Um, so, yeah, hopefully that answers your question. Awesome, awesome. Thank you so much, Adam, for such a uh, talk. And uh, it was truly inspiring. And thanks for your time as well. No so, problem. Thank you for having me. Yeah, thank you so much.